G'day guys, I'm Shannon Noel, and you're listening to Current This with Dando. And now I am joined on the line by one of Australia's most successful artists to date, being the only man to have 11 consecutive top 10 singles. After a three year absence, he recently released a new studio album titled A Million Sons, and he kicks off his national tour in Perth on February 24th. I'm of course talking about Shannon Noel. Shannon, thanks for your time, mate, and how's things? Yeah, good thanks, mate. How are you? Yeah, I'm always good, man. Life must be busy at the moment, getting ready for the new tour. Yeah, mate, yeah, just putting a few things together, trying to add a few rehearsals and, and whatnot, and that sort of thing, but really looking forward to it. The tour it stretches out over a number of months, as opposed to cramming loads of gigs into a short period of time. Do you think yeah. you learnt your lesson after doing 40 shows in 47 days on your first tour? Yeah, yeah, definitely, mate. You know, I, I, I got through all them uh, good as gold, you know, but it was just it's too much in too short a time, and... And these days, a bit different too, mate, the way it is. You know, people are a bit more strapped in it and uh, it's harder to get out on a Monday and Tuesday night sort of thing. So we sort of kept it as a, as a weekend exercise mostly this time. Yeah. I noticed this tour is 30 dates nationwide. However, I couldn't help but see that there was only one date in Victoria. What's going on there? Mate, it's only the first sort of block. I'm, uh, we'll be touring right through December. We just haven't announced um, the rest of the shows yet, but uh, I'll, be, I'll be getting down to Vic. Don't worry about that. Okay. My nan Marlene, she's an obsessed fan. She pleaded that I ask you when you plan to visit Geelong again. Oh, mate, we'll def- definitely get down there as well. I've got a few uh, a couple of mates in there, Geelong who are, who are hammering me about when I'm getting down there too, so there's no doubt we'll be getting down there some stage. Oh, sweet. Getting to the new album, A Million Sons, it's been three years since you released your last album. Do you see this as a comeback of sorts, or do you feel like you've never left? Mate, you know, I sort of never stopped working the whole time. I can understand why uh, people would say that, you know, just being out of the spotlight for a little while. But um, I, I wrote, I co-wrote 57 songs for this latest album, so I sort of was going into the studio every day writing songs. So I just wanted to make it the best I could possibly make it, and it, and it took, you know, it took that long to do that. So, yeah. You but, know, it, it's sort of, if, 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 the, if it works out, I don't care what people call it. <laughs> The, the first single release was Switch Me On. It was co-written with Benji Madden from Good Charlotte. How did this partnership all come about? Mate, uh, there's, uh, Benji signed with Universal uh, EMI, sorry, same as me, yep. publishing. So he had a few days off while I was in Sydney and, and uh, they asked him if he wanted to write me and, and uh, asked me if I wanted to write with him. So we sort of got together and, and I had a bit of an idea up and running and, and then uh, we wrote Switch Me On in about four hours. So it was oh, great. Oh, sweet. Your first single back in 2004 was a cover. So what are the chances of seeing you sing a good Charlotte cover in your future? Mate, uh, well, I don't know. We used to sing lots of music <laughs> in a cover band back in the day, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, which is always heaps of fun. But, yeah, I don't know, mate. Actually, they... Uh, I'd like to sing with them or something like that. It'd be awesome. Yeah, you, you said, like just said then, you started out in a cover band. Was it a shock to the system when you were all of a sudden expected to start writing your own material? It was a bit, mate. You know, I was thrown in the deep end a bit. I, I was sent straight out of the States and put with blokes who've written 67 number one in America. <laughs> so it was a bit of a daunting sort of task, you know. But as they say, baptism by fire, mate, you know. So I sort of, you know, sat back and got in there and learned, learned a lot from, from that experience. And, and uh, you know, hopefully it's starting to, starting to pay off. Has songwriting become an easier task for you now after eight years? It has a bit, mate, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a craft. It, you know, once you sort of learn how it's structured, you can, you can get better at it, you know. So I think the more you do it, the better you get at it. But um, in saying that, you know, you could, you know, when you first start out writing, you could write the best song you ever write in your, yeah. in your career. So, you, you know, it's a lot of, uh, bit of hit and miss. You started your career thanks to Australian Idol, but do you think singing slash talent shows these days still hold relevance in the music industry? Because they seem to mostly be just producing one-hit wonders that disappear, unlike yourself and Guy Sebastian. Yeah, mate, you know, I think the opportunities there, I think maybe a part of the problem is, is a lot of people who go into the competitions now think that they've made it as soon as the show ends, yep. which is the complete opposite. That's, you know, that's where you're only starting from, so... Um, I think, you know, the opportunity is still there as long as people have the right uh, mentality going into the rest of their career. Yeah. The show. I've read that you've bust with your brother since becoming a star. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. We sort of, every, every time we get together, we sort of, you know, just enjoy playing playing music with each other. And, and uh, we've been known to, you know, walking down the street after, after you know, visiting the, the uh, local for a little while. <laughs> uh, you know, just offer a busket, you know, 10 bucks or 20 bucks to borrow his guitar for a while and, and bust out a few tunes. It's just a bit of fun, you know. How much cash, on average, does a Shannon Noel busking session take in these days? Then? <laughs> well, mate, we always give it back to the bloke who, who's there. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I don't really stop the count it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Did you or your family ever fear that fame would get to your head once you started becoming a household name? Mate, yeah, I don't know. You know, I, I sort of never, never put too much stock in it because as quickly as you 
you're found out about, you can be forgotten. So, you know, it's all about, you know, just being happy with, with what I'm doing and trying to do the best I can with it, you know. I think um, that's the main main objective. And, uh, you know, never never let it never let it sort of get, get to your head because it's not really, it's all about the fans, really, mate. You know, they say, they say that have the say over whether you survive or you don't. So I think they're the ones who, who uh, are the heroes or the... Or the stars in my mind. Yeah, exactly. H- how much has being married with a family impacted on your career in regards to both like your songwriting and how long you can go on a tour? Well, mate, you know, having a family impacts on your life, uh, no matter what you're doing, I think, you know, so um, it's definitely sort of, it's a bit hard to get carried away with yourself Come around and you've got to change your nappy. <laughs> like that, so. so I think, you know, in saying that, you know, it's, 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 been, it's a great leveller as well, you know, um, and you realise that it's not all about you, that there's you know, people who depend on you as well, so that sort of keeps you focused. Let's be honest, you're not really changing nappies these days, are you? No, not these days, thank goodness. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be in a bit of trouble. Yeah. <laughs> Do your family ever come on tour with you? No, I mean, they come to different shows sometimes when, when the opportunity's there, you know, but with the, uh, Sienna just started school this year, so yep. it's a bit tough uh, with the kids going to school, and now they play sport every weekend, so... It's a little bit difficult to, to uh, I think they'd rather stay and do their sport and that than come to the shows most times. So. Do you think that your success will benefit your kids if they ever want to grow up to follow in your footsteps as a musician? Mate, you know, whatever they want to do when they grow up is, is their choice, you know. I'm not going to push them into anything, but, um, you know, I'd gladly definitely help them if I can in any way, you know, but um, I just want them to be happy doing whatever they want to do. So if that's what that's, they choose as their, you know, career path, then... Of course, I'm going to try and do what I can to try and push them along or help more open some doors. Perhaps you could sing in their cover band. Yeah, that's it, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Does it feel satisfying knowing that your song Lift is the anthem for all overweight people nationwide wanting to lose weight? Mate, you know, the, the song in itself is, is a bit of a, a song, you know, saying, you know, you've got to have a go and, and throw your hat in the ring. I think just in life in general, uh, it sort of talks about not giving up and... and um, and trying to be the best you can be. So, you know, if, if that's uh, one of the avenues that it's used for, then I'm, I'm over the moon for it. Yeah. You've lost the facial hair gimmick now. That was what many people knew you for. What would you say is your new gimmick? Ah, uh, mate, I wouldn't have a clue. <laughs> Maybe you can tell me. <laughs> oh, I couldn't tell you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Changing nappies. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, it's no secret you have a die-hard fan base, particularly women. What's the strangest request you've ever had from a fan? Uh, oh, one time someone wanted me to sign their really, really pregnant belly. Oh, really? Yeah, with a texture. So I'm sort of like, oh, no, I didn't want to get the baby. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, I was panicking a little bit with that one. <laughs> what, what's the strangest request you've had from a man? Uh, probably the same thing. He said he wasn't pregnant. Yeah, I was going to say pregnant, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just, a, just a couple more questions, man. I won't keep you too long. Um, right. Where do you see yourself on both a personal level and your music career in 12 months' time? Five months. 12 months. 12 months. Yep. And, you know, hopefully still going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, you know. Um, yeah, in, in both aspects. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know, mate. You know, hopefully, you know, hopefully down the track, just touring, um, uh, you know, and hopefully with people who have enjoyed the album, and uh, come along to the shows and, and um, perform the songs that I, that I sort of spent writing. And one last question, man. I ask this to everybody. Yep. What, what advice do you have for all aspiring songwriters and musicians? I'd say just practice your, your, your skill or, or your talent, you know, and, and hone your skill and, and write. And if you're a writer, just keep writing and writing and writing. Like I said, it's a, the more you write, the better you get at it. So, uh, you know, and the closer you are to writing that, that song of your lifetime. Well, there you go. If you haven't already, make sure you pick yourself up a copy of Shannon Knoll's new album, A Million Sons. Don't miss the chance to see Shannon perform on his 2012 national tour, which kicks off February 24th. And for all the latest news and info on Shannon, go to shannonknoll.com.au. Once again, Shannon, thanks for your time, mate, and good luck with the tour. No worries, mate. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Catch you later, mate. See you, mate.